Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. It's time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks written by Al Lewis. Well, by last week, the final examinations were all completed. And our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, felt that she was entitled to celebrate. Accordingly, I granted Mr. Boynton the privilege of spending all Thursday afternoon and evening with me. In fact, I granted him the privilege about 20 minutes before he asked me. <laughs> Friday morning at breakfast, my landlady inquired about the preceding night's revelry. What did you do, Connie? Where did Mr. Boynton take you? He took me to the zoo, Mrs. Davis. <laughs> Oh, my goodness, Connie. I know Mr. Boynton's conservative, but I thought he'd at least take you to some place where there's a little gaiety. Oh, the zoo wasn't so bad. They get a pretty nice crowd. <laughs> if you like orangutans. <laughs> Mr. Boynton doesn't spend much, does he, Connie? He hasn't got much, Mrs. Davis. But there's one thing about my dates with him. I get home in time to get plenty of sleep. Last night, it was only 10 o'clock when we said goodnight. You didn't just say goodnight, did you? Certainly not, Mrs. Davis. We shook hands first. <laughs> oh, it was so romantic, standing there in the moonlight with our fingers locked in a mad embrace. <laughs> it doesn't sound very romantic to me. Oh, it was. Mr. Boynton got so carried away, he almost took off one of his gloves. <laughs> Well, I certainly wouldn't call this a whirlwind courtship, would you? Frankly, Mrs. Davis, I've felt a stronger wind coming out of a flat bottle of club soda. <laughs> but Mr. Boynton was in a very good mood yesterday. It seems he's in line for a professorship at State University. Really? Yes, as a matter of fact, the dean is going to interview him after school today. It'll mean a lot to Mr. Boynton if he gets the position. More money, prestige... Why, he'll even be able to settle down and get married to some nice girl. What nice girl? What's the difference as long as she's a refined, wholesome English teacher who lives with Mrs. Davis? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you and Mr. Boynton should have been married long ago. Why don't you give him a hint once in a while? Why, I'm surprised at you, Mrs. Davis. You ought to know I'm not that sort of a person. I was thinking of the poor souls who resort to trickery to get their men just last evening... When, Connie? Right after I steered Mr. Boynton into a Chinese restaurant, ordered a bowl of rice, and slipped the waiter a quarter to throw it at us. <laughs> I know you're joking, Connie, but believe me, a little mental suggestion wouldn't hurt. That's Walter Denton. I'd better get my hat and coat. Be right with you, Walter. Will you get that phone, please, Mrs. Davis? I can't seem to find my hat. Certainly, dear. Hello. Oh, uh, hello, Miss Brooks. This is Mr. Boynton. Oh, thanks just the same, dear, but this is Mrs. Davis. Oh. Connie is rushing to get out of the house, but I'll call her if Oh, you... don't disturb her, Mrs. Davis. I just wanted to tell her about the call I received from Dean Faraday of State U. She's told me something about your expectations, Mr. Boynton, and I'm certainly thrilled over the news. We both are. Oh, thank you. So am I. I'd do anything to get that position, Mrs. Davis. As a matter of fact, I, I had to resort to a bit of deception when I spoke to the dean a few minutes ago. Deception? Well, I live alone, as you know, and the dean made it quite clear to me that the board favors family men on their faculty. So I, uh, I had to tell a little fib. What did you say, Mr. Boynton? Well, I told him I am a family man. I said I lived with Mrs. Boynton. Mrs. Boynton? Yes, my mother. Of course, Mom actually lives upstate with Dad, but, well, I figured a little white lie like that couldn't do much harm. Oh, of course it can't, Mr. Boynton. I'll explain it all to Connie, and she'll see you at school later on. Oh, fine, Mrs. Davis. Goodbye. Goodbye. Be right with you, Walter. Well, Mrs. Davis, I'm off. Oh, uh, before you go, Connie, that was Mr. Boynton on the phone just now. He said he had to play a little trick on the dean when he called, because the dean prefers family men to bachelors. What kind of a trick? Mr. Boynton told him he lives with Mrs. Boynton. Mrs. Boynton? But how could he say... Coming, Walter! Oh, but Connie, I, have I haven't to told you about... I have Mr. Boynton. If I don't get down to Walter's car, one of them will blow a gasket. <laughs> so 
So you see, Walter, Mr. Boynton may soon be going to State University to teach. Gosh, Miss Brooks, all the way to State U? Why, that's over 20 blocks from Madison High. Well, I don't think they'd move it any closer, Walter. Besides, he hasn't got the professorship yet. Although, from what Mrs. Davis said, he's certainly anxious to get it. He even told the dean he was a family man, said he lives with Mrs. Boynton. His wife? Naturally. Boy, if Mr. Boynton told anybody he's married, he must really want that job. Now, according to my dad, faking your marital status is a pretty dangerous thing to do, though. He got into a jam once just by saying he was single. Oh? He said it to my mother. <laughs> yeah, four weeks later, they were married. Serves him right. Yeah, he got pretty sore at her for making him fall so head over heels in love when he couldn't really afford marriage. You see, at that time, he wasn't making any more money than you make as a school teacher. Unemployed, eh? <laughs> but, Walter, please don't mention this opportunity Mr. Boynton has until the deal is consummated. You know, Mr. Conklin might make things a bit unpleasant if he heard he was losing one of his best teachers. Oh, I won't breathe the word of it to a soul, Miss Brooks. Of course, I'll have to tell Harriet. Harriet Conklin? Walter, I know you're very fond of her, but she's the last person in the world to be entrusted with confidential information. She doesn't mean any harm, I'm sure, but, well, her class just named her Miss Town Crier of 1950. <laughs> or to put it another way, everything you tell Harriet goes in one ear and out her father. <laughs> Good morning, Miss Brooks. Did Walter bring you down today? Yes, Harriet, he did. He's out finding a place to park. Oh, well, you know my girlfriend, Winona Sims, Miss Brooks. Her folks are back together again this morning, but last night they had an awful spat and her dad checked into his club, and I've been dying to see Walter to tell him the news. Well, I don't... I already told it to Stretch Snodgrass and Chester Burke and Dottie Guernsey in case they see Walter first. But if you happen to see Winona, please don't tell her I told you, Miss Brooks. Why not? It's a secret. <laughs> Now, that's what I call a secret with a high Hooper rating. <laughs> Don't worry, Harriet, my lips are sealed. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got to stop in the lab and see Mr. Boynton before my class. All right, Miss Brooks. See you in a little while. Come in. Oh, it's you, Miss Brooks. I'm glad you stopped by. Did Mrs. Davis say anything about the... About your telling the dean you're living with Mrs. Boynton? Yes, I know everything, Mr. Boynton. Oh, not quite everything, Miss Brooks. You see, Dr. Faraday called me back after I spoke with Mrs. Davis, and he said he wants to meet Mrs. Boynton. He's coming to my apartment after school today. Now I'm really in a spot. Not if you carry your original deception a step farther and produce Mrs. Boynton for the dean. Produce her? I am now applying for the job. <laughs> You're not serious, Miss Brooks. About you? I mean, uh, <laughs> I know how much this new position means to you, Mr. Boynton, and I'd like to help you out. Besides, what's wrong with me being Mrs. Boynton? You? That's ridiculous. Thanks a million. <laughs> what's ridiculous about it? Well, you, you don't look the part. Dr. Faraday would expect to meet a much more, uh, well, mature woman. Someone not only older in years, but more settled. I'll settle, I'll settle. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, thanks just the same, but uh, wait a minute. Maybe makeup would do the trick. Makeup? Mm, powder and stuff, sure. A few streaks of white in your hair make you look real stately, and, and then I could tell the dean you're considerably older than you look. Well, let's not rush into senility, Mr. Boynton. <laughs> We can discuss the details after school. Fine. And, Miss Brooks, I'd like to say that I think it's wonderful of you to get in there and, and pitch for me this way. I've been pitching for a long time, Mr. Boynton. You just haven't been catching. <laughs> <laughs> I'd better get over to my room now. Goodbye, Mr. Boynton. Goodbye, Mrs. Boynton. Mrs. Boynton. <laughs> shall, I, uh, shall I walk you over to your class? Don't bother. I'll hop the first cloud heading east. <laughs> Toodle. Oops. Oh, sorry, Miss Brooks. Harriet. I just happened to be near this door tying my shoelace. I see. Is that how you caught your earlobe in the keyhole? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Miss Brooks. All I overheard was... <laughs> Harriet, I don't like the tone of your... <laughs> <laughs> what did you hear? It's a secret, Miss Brooks. See you in class. Oh, great. 
Oh, I thought I heard you talking, Miss Brooks. Or was there someone out here with you? Only the house detective. Uh, Harriet Conklin. That's what delayed me. Oh, I'm glad. I wanted to catch you. Oh, well, here I am. Catch. <laughs> I just thought of something, Miss Brooks. If you're to convince the dean that you're Mrs. Boynton, we'd better get your wedding ring. Now, I'll just measure your finger with this piece of string and get over to Miner's jewelry store after school. Oh, don't spend too much on a ring, Mr. Boynton. After oh, all... Oh, Miner's a pretty good friend of mine. I'm sure he'll lend me the ring for just one day. <laughs> uh, you, uh, you won't back out, will you, Miss Brooks? Of course not. I'll play Mrs. Boynton to the hilt, even though it will be rather a grueling job. What do you mean, grueling? It's only for one day. That's what I mean. I love the position, but the hours are so short. <laughs> Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment. But first, here is Vern Smith. No other dentifrice offers proof of such results. Proof that Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Two years' research at leading universities using Colgate Dental Cream, hundreds of case histories, makes this the most conclusive proof in all dentifrice history on tooth decay. Conclusive proof that when teeth are brushed with Colgate's right after eating, Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Yes, the toothpaste you use to clean your breath while you clean your teeth now offers a safe, proved way to reduce tooth decay. Modern science shows decay is caused by mouth acids, which are at their worst right after eating. Brushing teeth with Colgate's, as directed, helps remove acids before they harm enamel. Colgate Dental Cream has been proved to contain all the necessary ingredients, including an exclusive patented ingredient for effective daily dental care. Get Colgate Dental Cream today. Big economy size, only 59 cents. Always use Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay before it starts. Remember, no other dentifrice offers proof of such results. Well, my spirits were considerably buoyed up during the morning classes by the thought that I was to be Mrs. Boynton that very afternoon. I refused to dwell on the fact that by midnight I'd feel like queen for a day. <laughs> and i just finished my lunch when Harriet Conklin joined me in the cafeteria and told me her father wanted to see me. It was obvious when I got to the principal's office that Mr. Conklin had received some kind of a report on my conversation in Mr. Boynton's lab because he was much too jovial. Ah, Miss Brooks, sit down, sit down. Thanks, thanks. Well, what's new with you? How's every little thing? Just dandy, in a tiny sort of way. <laughs> yeah? yeah? Well, it seems to me that there's something in the air. Uh, don't you agree? It is getting a bit nippy out. Might even <laughs> freeze up tonight. The radio advised the citrus growers to smudge. <laughs> I didn't ask you in here for a frost warning, Miss Brooks. <laughs> I, I see something in your face that's never been there before. Your, your eyes are glowing, your cheeks are flushed. Tell me, what's the cause of it? They had chili con carne in the cafeteria. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, sir, I'd better... Well, there's the start of the next period. I'd better be running along now. Oh, very well, Miss Brooks. And thank you for a most delightfully cryptic few moments. Good day, Mr. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, Miss Brooks. Didn't you get that shoe tied yet? <laughs> Never mind, Harriet. I'll see you in class later on. Okay, Miss Brooks. Well, Daddy, did Miss Brooks let the cat out of the bag? She didn't let an undernourished mouse out of the bag. <laughs> but I'd swear there's something up. Well, of course there is. I told you we called her Mrs. Boynton this morning, and I also heard him say they were meeting a doctor something or other in his apartment this afternoon. A doctor, eh? Must be a minister. They're getting married this afternoon. Well, it's been some time coming, but this has been a very modest and sensible courtship between these two teachers. Kindness, Consideration and courtesy have all played their part. And now, at long last, she's nailed him. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? And just think, Daddy, now that she's getting married, Miss Brooks can do what she always said she'd do, quit her job and raise a family. Ah, yes, motherhood. What greater boon to the American home than the pitter-patter of little... 
quit her job! <laughs> well, she can't do this to me. Why, do you realize how difficult it is to secure a competent teacher in the middle of a school year? Well, sure, Daddy. But there's nothing anybody can do about it. After all, you can't interfere with Dan Cupid. I can't, eh? Well, if Dan Cupid thinks he's going to rob me of an English teacher, I'll beat the bare little brute until he drops his quiver. <laughs> So if you'll go on ahead to my apartment, Miss Brooks, I'll pick up the wedding ring at Miner's store. You see, Dr. Faraday said he'd meet me right after school, and I wouldn't want him to wait out in the hall. All right, Mr. Boynton, but what do I do with my hands until you come back and slip me the ring? Well, uh, uh, couldn't you sort of fold them? They'll be folded, all right. I'll be praying. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it'll work, Miss Brooks. Now, just put plenty of powder in your hair and assume a, a dignified attitude. Now we'd better be going. All right, I'll do it, Mr. Boynton. But why Mrs. Boynton has to be an octogenarian, I'll never know. Oh, well, see you in a little while, Mr. Boynton. Very well, Miss Brooks. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, that's a relief. Even if I am a few minutes late, at least my mother will be there to greet Dr. Faraday. <laughs> Here it comes, Connie. Be right there. I wish I knew more about the layout of this apartment. The front door must be one of these. Come in, Doctor. We've been... Oh, it's a closet. <laughs> Welcome, Dr. Faraday, to our little nest. Thank you, my dear. You, of course, would be Mrs. Boynton. I sure would. That is, I am, Mrs. Boynton. <laughs> May I help you off with your coat, sir? Oh, thank you. Well, this certainly is a lovely apartment you folks have here. Now, how long have you been living in it? About three years. Now, I'll just hang up your coat and we can have a nice chat until Philip comes home. He'll just be a few minutes. Uh, forgive my mentioning it, Mrs. Boynton, but you're hanging my coat in the bathroom. <laughs> oh, sorry. Since we had the apartment done over, I get rather confused. Here we are. This is the kitchen. <laughs> Isn't it cute? <laughs> While I'm here, suppose I make some lemonade for us. Yeah, but what about my coat? Better take it with you. This apartment's pretty drafty. <laughs> Why don't you just make yourself comfortable in the living room, if you run across it? <laughs> I'll get some lemons out of the pantry, Dr. Faraday. Uh, very well, Mrs. Boynton. I'll go into the living room. Uh, somebody at the front door. Uh, shall I answer it? Uh, shall I answer it? I guess Mother Boynton is busy. Well? I locked myself out. <laughs> Let's, uh, let's postpone the lemonade, shall we? <laughs> Why don't we just sit in the living room and have a little talk? You lead and I shall follow. <laughs> ah, here we are. You'll take this rocker, I presume? I wouldn't be without it. <laughs> you sit here on the sofa, Doctor. Uh, fine. You know, Mrs. Boynton, when I first made known my need for a biology professor at State U, Philip Boynton was most highly recommended by our board of directors. You can be very proud of him indeed. Oh, I am. I've been proud of Philip ever since the day we met. <laughs> uh, the day you met? I'll never forget it. It was on a bus. <laughs> a bus? Yes, he got up and gave me his seat. He gave you his... He was getting off at the next block anyway. <laughs> you see, he was going to visit his father, who happened to be in the hospital at the time. His father was in the hospital? I know things were different in those days, but I don't recall them as being that different. <laughs> the next time I saw Philip was two weeks later. He'd just been made a lieutenant in the Air Corps. <laughs> he looked so cute. 
Of course, some of the enlisted men said he wasn't dry behind the ears yet. <laughs> they might have had something there. <laughs> Mrs. Boynton, I'm happy to see you've got such a keen sense of humor. In times like these, Ed. Well, hello, Dr. Faraday. Oh, hello, Boynton. Philip, darling, let me take your hat. Uh, no, no, don't you move, dear. Just stay right there on your rocker. Oh, such devotion. <laughs> you know, I like that in a man, Boynton. I like the way you look at her. Oh, she's still my sweetheart. She's a fine woman. She's the salt of the earth. The cream of the crop. She's all wool and a yard wide. Only from... <laughs> now, if you gentlemen will excuse me, I'll go fix some lemonade. Oh, certainly, dear. That'll be very nice. Well, Mr. Boynton, your mother and I have been getting along famously. Oh, she's a great old gal. Yes, indeed. Hey, sit down, my boy. I'd like to ask you a few questions before I make my final recommendation for your appointment to state you. Now, uh, for instance, do you have any plans for leaving your present state of bachelorhood? Well, not immediately, sir. You know how it is with school teachers. They mostly meet other school teachers, and, well, we just can't afford each other. <laughs> but well, someday, when I've advanced a bit in salary, I do hope to get married. Well, sounds like you've already selected a candidate. Uh, tell me about her, son. Well, we met on a bus. <laughs> a bus? Yeah, yes, sir. I got up and gave her my seat. I was getting off at the next block anyway. <laughs> you see, uh, my father was in the hospital at the time. <laughs> you know, this sounds very familiar. <laughs> Here we are, fresh lemonade coming up. One for you, Doctor, and here's your glass, Philip. Oh, thank you. Nobody makes better lemonade than you do. Hmm, yeah, it is good. You know, Mrs. Boynton, I simply can't get over your youthful appearance. Thank you, sir. I, uh, I'm not being presumptuous, I trust, but would you mind telling me how old you were when Philip came into the world? Well, as a matter of fact, he came in before I did. <laughs> Your lemonade, Philip? It, it, it's too, too sweet. Would you please come into the kitchen with me for a moment? Surely, but... Uh, please excuse us, Dr. Faraday. We'll be right back. Yeah, of course. Miss Brooks, this is no time for kidding. You've got to act much older in front of the dean. Ten or twenty years older. But, Mr. Boynton, that would make me old enough to be your mother. Of course. He thinks you are my mother. Now, now, now here's the ring and... How does that go again? <laughs> I thought I was supposed to be Mrs. Boynton, your wife. My wife? That's ridiculous. No, I explained it all to Mrs. Davis on the phone. I don't care what you explained. My father didn't raise his daughter to be your mother. <laughs> but, Miss Brooks, you wouldn't want to wreck my chances for a professorship now, would you? No, Mr. Boynton, I wouldn't. But I'm going to make as hasty and gracious an exit as I possibly can. Oh, Dr. Faraday, I just remembered a rather pressing engagement. Will you excuse me? Oh, certainly, my dear. I hope we'll meet soon again. Thank you. Goodbye, Philip. Goodbye. Oh, come now. Don't be embarrassed in front of me. Go ahead. Kiss her goodbye. Oh, that won't be necessary. You heard what the man said. <laughs> come on over here and kiss your dear old ever-loving mammy this minute. <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. Oh, wait a minute, Ma. Shucks, I, I really shouldn't. Well, gee, Ma, I don't want to. Come here, baby. <laughs> Junior. From now on, I buy your clothes in the men's department. <laughs> Goodbye again. Hey, goodbye, Mrs. Boynton. And may I say it's been very pleasant. Very pleasant indeed. You're not just rattling your sheepskin, Dean. <laughs> Eve Arden, as our Miss Brooks, returns in just a moment. But first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight? Yes, tonight. Show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Luster cream, world's finest shampoo. 
No other shampoo in the world gives K. Dumit's magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Not a soap, not a liquid. Luster Cream Shampoo leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft, manageable. Even in hardest water, Luster Cream lathers instantly. No special rinse needed after a Luster Cream Shampoo. So gentle, Luster Cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight, yes, tonight, try Luster Cream Shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl, you owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, I started to leave Mr. Boynton's apartment, but as I opened the door... Hello, Miss Brooks. Mr. Conklin. What have you done to yourself? You look so much older. I've aged ten years since I opened this door. Oh, come on. Let's join the others. I hope I'm not too late. Uh, but, Mr. Conklin, oh, I... Good afternoon, Mr. Boynton. Mr. Conklin. Aren't you going to introduce me to your guest? Uh, of course. Uh, Dr. Faraday, may I present our principal, Mr. Conklin? Now, how do you do, sir? Now, how do you do, Doctor? Well, have you made it official yet? Uh, not quite, Mr. Conklin. We thought maybe we'd try it out for a wh while first. <laughs> <laughs> what? You mean they're not married? Mr. Boynton rarely marries his mother. Look, Mr. Conklin, if you'll just come into the next, next room, room I... Next room, nothing. I came here to prevent this thing, and I'm glad I'm on time. But, Mr. Conklin, surely you wouldn't stand in the way of a teacher's advancement. Normally, no. But in this case, I'm forced to admit, albeit grudgingly, that she would be very hard to replace. She? She. I told you you didn't have enough makeup on, dearie. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Brooks, please. Miss Brooks, I don't know quite what's going on here, but I am convinced of one thing. State University will have to look further for a new biology professor. But, Dr. Faraday... I'm you... sorry, Mr. Boynton. Good day. Well, I know I've put my foot into something, but I wish someone would tell me what it was. Oh, it doesn't matter now, Mr. Conklin. The dean would have discovered the truth sooner or later. Dean? You mean that man was Dean Faraday of State University? Well, certainly. But I must have sounded like a blithering idiot. It's been a long time since I heard a better blither. <laughs> I'd better catch up to him and explain. Then I'll come back here and you can explain. I'll talk to you later on, Boynton. I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Boynton. Oh, forget it, Miss Brooks. It was wonderful of you to even try to act as my mother. I don't know how, how to thank you. Oh, that's easy, Mr. Boynton. How? Climb upon my knees, sonny boy. <laughs> Next week, turn into another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Luster Cream Shampoo, the soft, glamorous, caressable hair and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, directed by Al Lewis, with music by Wilbur Hatch. Doctors prove palm olive soap can bring you a lovelier complexion in 14 days. Yes, 36 leading skin specialists proved in tests on 1,285 different women that palm olive soap facials using nothing but palm olive, brought new complexion beauty to two women out of three. Just wash your face three times daily with palm olive soap, each time for 60 seconds, massaging palm olive's beauty lather onto your skin. Then rinse. So start your palm olive facials today. Remember, doctors prove palm olive soap can bring you a lovelier complexion in 14 days. For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North, the exciting, fun-packed adventures of an amateur detective and his beautiful wife. Tune in Tuesday evening over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at the same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. If you enjoyed this program, you'll also enjoy Teacher's Pet, a feature story on Eve Arden and Our Miss Brooks in the February issue of Liberty Magazine, now on the newsstands. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.